It's happening. It's happening, guys. It's happening. I'm not jinxing it. It's actually happening. Joaquin Correa, the barbecue aficionado, the barbecue master, asado king, looks like he is actually leaving Inter to go to Marseille in France. A moment that we thought we'll never see. What a summer this is turning out to be, guys. We've got rid of Gagliardini. We've got rid of Dalbert. And now we're getting rid of El Tuku Correa. Um, something that we've all been talking about. If Inter can do it, can they not do it? Um, and it shows how hard it is. You know, it's so easy to say when people say, oh, yeah, get rid of Sao Correa for this much, then buy someone else. No one wants to buy him. And even now, we're not selling him. It's a loan with option, as it's always been. It always was going to be. No one was going to buy this guy outright. There was the hopes of Saudis coming through. There was rumors that the Saudis were interested, but nothing ever materialized. And here it is. Confirmations are coming through uh, from a variety of different sources. Here's the Fabrizio Romano tweet, but the Marzo yesterday, Pedulla yesterday, all talking about a similar deal to Olympic Marseille. Uh, 2 million fee uh, plus a 10 million buy clause or 12 million euros in total uh, or there's, but there's also talk that there will be if some conditions are met it might be even a mandatory so it might be an obligation to buy here Romano says the clause will be mandatory if Marseille qualify to UCL I don't know I don't know yeah. so the stuff they were reading yesterday was saying um yeah they didn't really talk about i feel like that one is quite a you know too build too much of a realistic clause that makes it all you know to, to make it an obligation but of course that means if that is true we are all olympic marseille fans for this upcoming season Ale, om droit or boot or whatever they say the our french uh, brothers out there i am a marseille fan now this season because we want of course uh Marseille to be buying him all right I'm a, I'm a Sampdoria fan as well now because we want Sampdoria to be promoted and to buy Sebastiano Esposito as well I think he's got six seven million so we've got about you know we could potentially make about 20 20 million plus from Esposito and Correa if, if things work out uh but I'm not gonna hold my breath at least we've got rid of him for this season uh and we are of course recycling FC you know we care about the environment we care about uh global warming so it only makes sense you know when you when you send someone out you need to bring whatever you used in the past back in reuse and that is el nino maravilla alexis sanchez looks like he will be the uh the replacement the correa replacement as it says here um uh, medical test on friday for correa but I also read, uh, if I am reading correctly, let's quickly pull up Di Marzio. I'm pretty sure I read that also Sanchez will be doing his, um, yeah, Venerdi Le Vista Medica di Alexis. So also on Friday, Alexis will do his uh, medical visits. So it literally is same day, Alexis in, Correa out, which is hilarious. It's hilarious, isn't it, guys? The guy that last season we paid Alexis to leave Inter because his salary, seven million net, was really really expensive. We brought Lukaku in on the similar salary. Uh, we also wanted to bring in DiBala, and then you know he left too slowly. They, you know, to negotiate a goodbye fee, which ended up being around that six seven million mark. Very expensive still. Still miss save money to Inter, but it's crazy that we're bringing a guy back and now thirty four years of age. Um, you know, it is what it is. I don't know what you guys think of it. As a player, again, similar to a lot of these deals that we do with 30 plus years old people, um, when you look past the age factor, and of course, this other factor that we're talking about now, this you bloody pay this guy to leave you, now you're paying him to come back. Aside from that factor, Alexis Sanchez was when he was at Inter and still remains an upgrade on Correa. Because that guy we know, even last year at Marseille, he, uh, his numbers were really, really good. Um, you know, I'm going to pull him up quickly here. I'm sure he did uh, more than 20 uh, plus GA, which is fantastic. I mean, of course, you got to have the, the league on uh, calculation 
tax in there. Um, let's have a quick look. But the, the numbers were impressive. I mean, far superior to what Correa did, of course, uh, easily. So, yeah, last season he did 18 goals and three assists. So 21 GA, that is fantastic in 3,400 minutes. So 3,400 divided by 21. That's a goal or an assist every 160 minutes. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's some good numbers. And the thing is, at Inter, there was also this um, thing about Sanchez being injury prone. It seemed like last season he didn't even get one injury, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, he we know he's a really, really good professional uh, takes care of himself, of his body. He's, he's one of those obsessed type of players. You know, he's always super ripped, always in the gym, always working out. Uh, so hopefully, I don't know if he's retired or not from international duty. That was the big issue with me and with Sanchez. Always had it. it used to be like, you know, he'll start getting into the team, he'll start playing or even starting sometimes, and he'll go away with Chile and then he'll come back with an injury or just tired from the jet lag at his age and everything. Um, but financially even though we paid him seven million or whatever to leave actually now they're talking about that his salary is only going to be around 2.5 to 3 million net um which actually if we consider the payout that we gave him plus now the salary that we're going to pay him for this one season apparently it's going to be a one-year contract which is good it works around you know the same amount like it kind of plus minus you're about there as it would have cost you to keep sanchez last year because his total gross salary, seven million net, with growth decree, would have been around, you know, eight and a half, nine, which we saved on a bit. So whatever we saved, we're gonna pay him with a two and a half, three this season. So you know, the total cost around, I don't know, 10, 11 of these two years, is around about is there, is there. So it kind of makes sense uh, the there, and of course he's he would be earning less than Korea. Whatever he earns, whether it's 2.5 or 3 million, thanks to the growth decree, will be less than Correa. So it helps with the FFP financial squad cost. So he slots straight in. Um, and looks like he wanted us real bad. That's the that's the thing with the Sanchez this uh, this summer. Uh, and we're seeing it, aren't we? As when when Inter players leave Inter, they want to come back. All of them either regret leaving or want to come back just a season or two after. We've seen, we've seen it so many times recently. Wherever you want to say about Inter recently with our financial situation, it seems like we're still a very attractive place. Um, and yeah, Sanchez apparently rejected offers from Saudi Arabia. Uh, Pinilla, who's, you know, if you guys remember him, a striker, used to play for Cagliari, uh, other teams in Serie A. Um, he, he said that you know he knows Sanchez wants to come back to Inter. He's rejected offers because he keeps wanting Inter. Marotta a few days ago confirmed in an interview that yeah, Sanchez is. We were in touch with Sanchez, so that's always nice when a player wants to come back. You know, is hungry, is willing to play for Inter. That's always good. But one thing he has to accept, brother, you are not a caged lion. You are not a Lamborghini catching dust. You know those all those social media posts he used to do. Of course, you know the guy is one of the greatest if not the greatest chilean player of all time achieved so many things in the game one of the greatest of our generation so the ego is high as it should be but now i mean we're seeing it with a salary that's a very compared to the seven million that i used to earn uh you know a third of that it should probably looks like he's earning so he's humbled down the salary he needs to humble down the expectations in terms of minutes that he's going to get he needs to know now he's, he's definitely not going to be a starter. And if he accepts that, you know, he always, he's always has been. Conte used to say it, Inzaghi used to say it. As a substitute super sub, he does always have a knack of making impact. He's a big game player a lot of the times. He's got that mentality, you know, that Supercopa final against Juve in general. Like there's lots of games where I can think of where Sanchez came on last 15, 20 minutes, makes an impact. Um, so yeah, overall... As I said, morally, or you know, when you think about it, what we the guy that you pay to leave, you bring them back, and his age, not great, but Alexis Sanchez is Alexis Sanchez. Upgrade on Correa will be, you know, we already know he fits well with Lautaro. I think he'll fit well with Arnautovic as well. Um, yeah, we'll get back some experience in the team that we lost when uh, Jekyll left. And uh, now we're just waiting for Benji Pavard. Uh, that, that deal seems to be dragging on now again. Bayern dragging their feet with the replacement, same they did with Jan Zoma. So hopefully that gets done over the line quickly. We need him ASAP because Darmian, 
has got a slight injury from the last game. Acerbi still out injured, like numerically, we just need Pavar right now. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that gets done soon. I don't know if I'm going to get time to make that scout report, guys, as you guys, some of you may or may not know. I am getting married this weekend, so this these last few weeks and the upcoming couple of weeks are impossible for me. I'm going to be busy. I'm going to go on holiday on my honeymoon. So, yeah, content on the, on, on this channel is going to be very, uh, yeah, it's going to, it's going to be, uh, you know, like Korea, like Korea's appearances. You you're going to, you might see me, you might not, I might, you know, disappear for a bit. We'll, we'll get to speak about Korea. We'll make a video on Korea, though. Because, of course, uh, some people associate this bloody barbecue chef with me. Uh, one of the biggest flops of Inter's modern history, for sure. Uh, let's see how he ranks overall in the all-time flops. Uh, but he probably can, he can do... I think he can do okay in Marseille. There's only Marseille fans. He's not actually that bad. It's just... We've seen it. The Inter shirt is heavy. Some players just can't hack it. Correa couldn't hack it. Um... We've seen that Sevilla, Lazio, throughout his career. He's, he's, a, he's a good player. Just stank it out at Inter. It is what it is. Hopefully, it works out for him at Marseille and they redeem him full time forever. You guys let me know down in the comments down below. What do you make of this? Correa in, uh, Correa out. Oof. Correa out. Sanchez in. What's your thoughts? Uh, what role do you see Sanchez playing? Let me know in the comments down below. Ciao, ragazzi. Forza Inter. And yeah, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Ciao.